So in parts A and B, we have to find the magnitude and angle of vector A. Now vector A is given in unit vector notation, and we can see that the x component of vector A is positive four meters. So we start at the origin and we make an x component along the positive x axis. We can call this A sub x, and that is equal to four meters. And then we can see that the y component is negative three meters. So we go down the y axis in the negative direction. And we can say that a sub y is equal to negative three meters. Now the resultant vector will simply be the hypotenuse of this right triangle. We can call that vector a. And our job in part a is to find the magnitude of that vector. Well, of course, we formed a right triangle, so we can use the Pythagorean theorem. For example, we know that the hypotenuse squared, so in this case it would be the magnitude of A squared is going to equal the leg squared, so A sub X squared, plus the other leg squared, so negative 3 squared. On the right hand side we would simplify, we would have 16 plus 9, so that's 25, and now we can see that if we take the square root of both sides of this equation, that the magnitude of vector A is equal to 5 meters. So this is the correct answer to part A of the question. In part B we need this angle right here. So we'll just call that theta. And if we study that right triangle carefully we can see that the tangent of that angle theta would equal the side opposite of theta which is that 3 meters. Now we're just going to use 3 meters right now because we just want to talk about calculating the angle. So there's no need to put in the negative right now in order to find that angle. So we have the side opposite of theta, which is the 3 meters, over the side that is adjacent to theta, which is 4 meters. So now to solve for theta, we would just take the inverse tangent of both sides. We would be left with the inverse tangent of 3 fourths on the right hand side. Make sure your calculator is in degree mode and you do the inverse tangent of 3 fourths and you can see that theta is about 37 degrees. Now we want to report that angle very explicitly. It's not just 37 degrees, but if you look carefully, it was 37 degrees measured in a clockwise direction from the positive x-axis. Remember, of course, if your positive x-axis is right here and you're going in a clockwise direction, you're going that way. So it's definitely important to not just say 37 degrees, but just say 37 degrees clockwise from the positive x-axis. And this would be the correct answer to part B. Now, in part C, we have to find some similar information. So actually parts C and D, we need the magnitude and the angle for vector B. So we're just going to clean up our workspace here. And we can see that vector B has an X and Y component of positive 6 and positive 8 respectively. So start at the origin, go out along the positive X axis, a, a length of 6 meters. We can call this B sub X because it's the X component. And then go straight up the Y axis because it's positive 8 meters, and we would call that B sub Y is equal to 8 meters. We'll draw the resultant here. That is vector B, and again, you would just set up Pythagorean theorem. And then in this case, you would have the magnitude of B squared is equal to 100, and then you take the square root of both sides, and you would see that the magnitude of vector B is just 10 meters. So this is the correct answer to part C. We are going to calculate this angle theta right here. This time, notice the angle is measured counterclockwise from the positive x-axis. So looking at this right triangle, we see that the tangent of that angle theta would be the side that is opposite of theta, which is 8 meters, divided by the side that is adjacent to theta, which is 6 meters. You would take the inverse tangent of both sides. So you have theta equaling the inverse tangent of 8 sixths sixths, that's kind of hard to say, and then when you calculate that you see theta is about 53 degrees. And again, it's not enough to just say 53 degrees, you have to specify the direction. So it's 53 degrees counterclockwise from the positive x-axis. And so this would be the correct answer to part D of the question. Now things get a little bit interesting because in part E, we need to find the magnitude, and then in F, the angle, of vectors a plus b. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to actually take vectors a and b and organize them into a table. So how do we do this? Well, we just put in the x and y components of vector a and then the x and y components of vector b. And then we have a new row here for a plus b. And all you need to do is add the x components together. So 4 plus 6 would give you 10 meters. 
and then add the y components together, so negative 3 plus 8 would be positive 5 meters. These become the x and y components of vector a plus b, or vectors a plus b. So you just draw a new set of axes, you start at the origin, you go 10 meters along the positive x-axis, and then go up 5 meters along the positive y-axis, and then draw the resultant right there. And that resultant is the vector sum a plus b. We can just use the Pythagorean theorem one more time. For simplicity, we'll just call this vector c. That way, when we write the Pythagorean theorem, we have the magnitude of c squared is equal to 10 squared plus 5 squared. So the right-hand side becomes 125. We take the square root of both sides. And we would see that the magnitude is approximately 11.1 .1 or just 11 meters if you want to do two significant figures. So this is the correct answer to part E. We also need the angle of this vector sum. So we're just going to find this angle here. I know that's getting a little repetitive, but let's go through it again. We have the tangent of theta is equal to the side opposite over the adjacent. And then you just take the inverse tangent of 5 tenths. And you can see that theta is approximately 27 degrees. Again, not enough to just say 27 degrees. This time again, it's measured counterclockwise from the positive x-axis. So let's just add that label. So this is the correct answer to part F. Now in the next couple parts, we want to look at the vector difference B minus A. And you guessed it, we're going to set that up in a table. So we've set up the vectors. This time vector B comes in the first row, vector A in the second row, and we're looking for the difference. So vector B minus vector A. So this time you're going to be subtracting. You're going to take the x component of 6 and subtract 4, so you get 2 meters. Be careful here, you're doing 8 subtract negative 3, so that's 8 plus 3, so that's 11 meters. Let's draw another right triangle. So we have 2 meters going along the x-axis, the positive x-axis, and then 11 meters going up the positive y-axis, here is our resultant. We'll just call that c again. We'll set up the Pythagorean theorem. We end up with c squared is equal to 125. Take the square root of both sides, and you get the square root of 125, which again is 11 meters. And that is the correct answer for part g. For part h, we need this angle here. Same kind of trigonometry. The tangent of that angle equals the side opposite over the side adjacent. Let's do the inverse tangent of 11 halves and you're gonna get about 80 degrees. And that is counterclockwise from the positive x-axis. So that is the correct answer for part G, excuse me, part H. And so we're just marching our way through the alphabet. Now we're gonna move on and do vector A minus B in a table form. And so we will now subtract the x components. Four minus six is negative two meters. Subtract the y components, you get negative 11 meters. These are both negative, so start at an origin, go to the left 2 meters because your x component is negative, and then go down 11 meters because your y component is also negative, and then here is your resultant, we'll call it c, and we'll set up Pythagorean theorem. Lo and behold, we can see that c squared is equal to 125, and if you square root both sides of that equation, you will once again get 11 meters for the magnitude of a minus b. So that is the correct answer to part i. We'll go to part j, we're gonna find that angle right there. The tangent of that angle is equal to the opposite over the hypotenuse, excuse me, over the adjacent, going in autopilot mode here, so getting a little brain dead. And now the angle, when you do the inverse tangent of 11 halves is, oh my goodness, 80 degrees. But let's report that angle carefully. This one's a little trickier. Here's our origin. We might wish to superimpose the x-axis, and then here's the y-axis. We want to measure that angle starting at the positive x-axis. So you're going to have to travel 180 degrees to get over to the negative x-axis, but then you're going to have to add theta to get to that final vector position right there. So again, we're going to actually have to tack on 180 degrees to our answer. And so we do end up with 260 degrees measured counterclockwise from the positive x-axis. And so this is the correct answer for part J. Now there is a bit of a neat shortcut for the final part of the question. They wanted the angle between vector result A minus B and the vector result of B minus A. And if we notice something, we can make our life a little easier here, which I think we deserve after doing all those other parts. So we have the difference between vectors A and B. Notice that that is equal to negative one multiplied 
by the difference between vectors b and a. And if you're skeptical or unclear on that, you can distribute the negative one and you would get negative vector b plus vector a. But then through the commutative property of addition, we can reverse the order and we end up with a plus negative b. That simplifies, of course, to a minus b. So we go back and we can see that this equation here in blue is correct. Whoops. So what's the point though? What difference does that make? Well, what it's showing us is that whatever direction this vector is pointing, we can draw an arbitrary direction, it's going to be the negative of the direction that this vector is pointing. So when we say that two vectors are in, are in a negative relationship or one is the negation of the other, that simply means that the other vector is pointing in the completely opposite direction. That's what a negation of a vector means. It means to sort of just turn it around and point it the other way. Well, ask yourself, what's the angle between those two vectors? And you can see that since they form a straight line, the angle is simply 180 degrees. So that is the correct answer to the final part of the question. Thanks for taking the time to watch the video. If you're interested in making a small donation to my cause, I would greatly appreciate it, but please do not feel obligated to do so. I appreciate you taking the time to watch regardless.